And here we are. We'll be welcoming into the studio Jim Norton and his lovely wife, Nikki. I think you will enjoy today's show. It's a little bit of a change of pace, but we'll get in some of the usual stuff. We're also out on Twitter spaces. Uh, I'm watching you guys at the Restream and, of course, at the Rumble Rants as well. Uh, let's see. No, you guys haven't even think much going on there yet. Uh, you can follow Jim uh, at his website, which is jimnorton.com, and follow both Nikki and Jim on their new YouTube channel, which we're going to tell you all about. It's at Nikki and Jim NYC, and Nikki is N I K K I. And you can follow uh, Jim on X at Jim Norton and uh, Instagram at Jim Norton. And we're going to talk, I, th I think the first thing I want to talk about is their Instagram, which has been freaking hysterical of late. Oh, there they are. Has Jim and his lovely wife. They'll be here with me in the studio in mere moments. Our laws as it pertains to substances are draconian and bizarre. The psychopaths start this way. He was an alcoholic because of social media and pornography, PTSD, love addiction, fentanyl and heroin. Ridiculous. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a doctor for <laughs> sake. Where the hell you think I learned that? I'm just saying, you go to treatment before you kill people. I am a clinician. I observe things about these chemicals. Let's just deal with what's real. We used to get these calls on Loveline all the time. Educate adolescents and to prevent and to treat. If you have trouble, you can't stop and you want to help stop it. I can help. I got a lot to say. I got a lot more to say. Valentine's Day is around the corner, so it is time to look your absolute best. Our friends at GenuCell are celebrating Valentine's Day with a special gift just for you. From now until Valentine's Day, get a limited time gift of beauty box free with your order at GenuCell.com slash Drew. Each beauty box has two of GenuCell's top sellers for you to give a try. It's absolutely free. And right now, save over 60% off all of our favorite GenuCell products with one of our customized skincare packages. I know I'm a snob about the products I use on my face. Everybody knows it. Every time I go to the dermatologist's office, they're just rows and rows of different creams. Retinols, vitamin C cream, under eye cream, night creams. Scrubs. And then when I get to the counter, they're overpriced. All kinds of products that you can all find at GenuCell.com. Plus, with its immediate effects, GenuCell promises results that will make you smile. It's guaranteed or 100% of your money back. To let yourself and a loved one with our limited edition bundles right now at GenuCell.com slash Drew. Use our special code Drew at checkout for extra savings off your order today. And remember, every order placed is automatically upgraded to free shipping. Don't wait. That is genucel.com slash Drew, G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash D-R-E-W. As a physician, I am deeply concerned about efforts to erode the doctor-patient relationship. And as medical freedom continues to come under assault, I'm on a mission to empower you to be able to take care of yourselves and your family the way you want to. I urge you to get this medical emergency kit from the wellness company. It contains essential prescription medication you should really always have on hand. Here's Dr. Peter McCullough, Chief Scientific Officer. It's a very broad and diverse medical kit, can handle everything from a urinary tract infection, a fungal infection, a bronchitis. People can, you know, via telemedicine, uh, get their questions answered and get on the right track. But it's basically an at-home formula. Yep. For the first time, people, instead yep. of being uh, uh, held captive by an urgent care or by a doctor's office or an ER, they can actually do this themselves at home. Save yourself the weight and the hassle and feel better faster. Go to drdrew.com slash TWC for 10% off. That is drdrew.com slash TWC for 10% off the medical emergency kit. Let's get right to it. And please welcome my friends Jim and Nikki Norton to the house. Second guest in studio since we've revised our whole setup here. So thank you for being here, guys. The first time we've ever had two guests. Thank you. It's Thank a lot of pressure you. on us, too, if we're not good, and then this whole thing falls apart. You know who to blame. So. <laughs> well, we'll both blame Jim. Don't you worry. So. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. She was trans. <laughs> we'll get into all that. But uh, so, uh, Nikki, I've known you for a while, yes. and we finally had dinner. The four of us had dinner in New York a year or so ago. You're 18 yeah, months ago. About, about a year and, ago. And so, and so I've known Jim for a long time, too, and I know he's funny, and Comedian, obviously, and I've loved his work on Gutfeld and things. I've been wanting to try to time my Gutfeld appearances so I can be there with him. But um, I started watching the Instagram that you guys have together, and I'm like, God damn it. She's a lot funnier than you are. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you. He texted me that. He texted me. I said, She is so freaking funny. 
I don't even know how you do it. So I'm laughing out loud. I'm like, Susan, I can't see this. Oh, that makes me so happy. Someone's, a few people have told me, I thought you were a comedian. And I'm like, no, I didn't even know. Well, I was. think it's more that you're kind of a social media savant or something. Mm. Because the, the thing of the old man that's distracted in the foreground and you <laughs> looking at the camera in the background making fun of Jim, yep. which was uh, good times. And it really is our dynamic. Uh, they go up on my Instagram, sometimes on hers. She'll just post yes. weird videos. And I realize she's shooting. I didn't know she was shooting. Uh, it's, it looks all the time like you're caught off guard, Yeah, which I find hysterical. Today, this, this morning is, she's filming. I'm like, I'm yeah. naked. This is literally what it's like to live with this man. It's crazy. He does weird things. Like blinks. what? Like what? Nick, he like. blinks a lot. He just stands in the background like a creepy person, <laughs> like always, and just very neurotic. How yeah. do... <laughs> How uh, and then and then you've taken some shots at her. Right? They've been very very funny as well. Hundred percent, and that's why I love Nikki because she's funny. But also, you can't. I don't want to be with someone who can't take a joke. And she's she's again. She's not fragile at all, and neither am I. No, so we I, work. My favorite, and I, it stayed with me. She goes, oh, "Jim, would you be with me if I wasn't young and hot?" Do you remember what you said? I no, but I imagine it would. The, the answer probably tended into the negative. I'm going to say it, it went. It went to no, I wouldn't have. But if you if you if I were to, we'd have to really work on your personality. Oh. And then I said, oh. if my penis was two inches smaller, would you still date me? I wouldn't even email you. <laughs> exactly. You said it wouldn't answer the phone. That's what you said. So. So that exchange uh, stayed with me for quite to this moment. That was weeks yes. ago, right? Yes. And so uh, I was looking forward to seeing you guys <laughs> in person. But congratulations on that. And tell us about the YouTube channel. Again, it is at Nikki and Jim, N I K K I, at Nikki and Jim, N Y C. Yes. Uh, we just wanted to do something that was kind of showed what our life was like. It's like slice of life things. Um, you know, little things that we're doing. None of it is a put on. None of it is staged. It's just our no, life. No, I can together. vouch for that. I, mm -hmm. I, you guys are, are who you are. Yeah. That's, Thank you. That's it. And and I would love you both for that. You know, and I think other people will too. We, you know, we had an interesting history in terms of how we all made. We allowed to talk about that. Oh, sure, sure, oh, sure, absolutely. Yeah, Why don't you tell the story? Well, as you know very well, Doctor Drew, um, the immigration process with me getting into the United States was crazy. And it was during COVID. It yeah. was during yeah, COVID. Which didn't help things. And I mean, you know, we tried to reach out to so many people. You were one of those. You wrote us a really nice letter, which I think contributed a lot. So for I, I hope because you they were you. holding you out for it. It was insane. It was insane. insane. Again, I did not know you, so I had to like, if you remember, I had to interview you and make sure that I felt yeah. comfortable. Yeah. Uh, and it was like so clear to me that it was bullshit after talking yeah. to you for twenty minutes, and it was really horrible, frankly. Honestly, I, I, it really that something was. Something as ridiculous as that would hold you out. We're, and tell people where are you from? Where were you coming in from? I'm from Norway. Yeah. So I lived in Norway my whole life, and then I meet Jim online, and I'm like, oh, let's, I'll meet you in the states. So um, when I was 18, I texted a friend of mine in regards to hashish, because in Norway you smoke hashish, not pot usually, right? Uh, uh. And I send this text message and the police confiscate her phone in an unrelated mat matter. And in this way, now I'm in the police station and long story, but I signed a summons of $100 literally. And now I got on my record that I've used hashish. Yeah. So I, I, and, and, and the way they tried to present it was, this this person's a hash a weed addict. Yes. This is a marijuana addict. Mm -hmm. And I had to like go to the mat saying no, that's not what this is. The, are are it, they weird about weed in Nor Norway? Um, well, they're strict about drugs in Norway, but this was like a misdemeanor class oh. type of thing, like less than a parking ticket. $100 fine. And I it think. was just a text message, never any possession, yeah. none of that. Um, so when I then came to the embassy, of course, I brought my police report and everything. And of course, there was that little blip. Um, but then when I came there, you know, the officer goes, look, you're a convicted criminal and because oh, of that and, criminal. and I'm sure you know that the the weed is the schedule one oh. um, class yeah, drug so and, and heroin is like what number two, two um, yeah. below well, that yeah it depends it can be the same in certain areas mm. yeah so it's just it's just so silly our, our drug our really internationally drug laws are bizarre but our, in the US it's very bizarre as well it's, and were the US the ones making issue of it or was Norway making the issue no, US, US 100% yeah, yeah. yeah. and, yeah. and uh, now, how did he, you? So you guys met because it was, when did you meet? How long ago? 
I mean, the first time we spoke was <clears throat> around October, November of 2016. Okay. Um, but we talked online for eight, nine months. Or it made eight months before we actually met in person. Yeah. Because she couldn't get into the States to visit. Yeah. So I booked gigs in Norway just to meet her. No shit. That was why mm -hmm. I went there. I wanted to meet Nikki. Uh, Did, was there enough people speaking English or Jim Norton fans that you could get a room for? Well, or? fans is a very <laughs> tiny word. Um, people is curious as to who the blinking frog was. They just kind of showed up. Uh, it was a small crowd, but they had a good time, I hope. Uh, but yes, I literally booked it just to meet Nikki. Um, and it was, I'm happy I did. I flew her to Amsterdam and I knew immediately, like, I really liked this person. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. it was more than just a sexual attraction. It was yeah. more than just, I knew her as a person for eight months and meeting, I was like, yep, this is somebody I want to spend a lot of time with. So then he drugged you and brought you into the country? No, she drugged me, actually. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she gave me a Cialis, my dick didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Anthrax. <laughs> you, yeah, that was the drunkiest Cialis. Here you go. Take this. Aging is a, is a brutal, brutal process. It's terrible. <laughs> terrible. We can talk about it if you want, but I'm very familiar with it in many ways. Um, and so you guys meet uh, and you fall in love. And is it immediately we're heading towards mm. something commi committed? No, I mean, or? we were dating. But again, because she couldn't get into the States, it was just it's well, hard was, to maintain it other uh, than just online. And I'll fly you to Iceland or Paris mm -hmm. or wherever we met. We but I don't think we ever expected this to be a problem, right? Because I'm Norwegian, you know. Uh, so I never thought that it would be a problem for me to be traveling to the States. I literally never expected it. So, But I relocated to Canada because they never had any issue with it. So oh. I was able as a Norwegian to immigrate, or well, not immigrate, but get get like a working holiday visa, it's called, for Europeans. And, and did you ever contemplate doing 90 Day Fiance? You know, it's funny. We thought about yes. it. No, really? We, no, we, I'll tell anything to get her in. I would have been happy oh, to do it no, just to get so her in. Interesting. Mm -hmm. they, you, did they? Did you discuss it with producers or anything? No. Oh, no, 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 because they would have made us look like clowns. It would, everything would have been a fight. Or, yes. you know, they would have made it look like there was her being trans was a bigger issue than it was. Ooh, so, yeah. 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 But no, Although, but, I don't know. They might have, because sometimes they'll do stuff. I'm a fan of that series. Oh, me too. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and so sometimes well. when things are healthy, they'll just cut it down. <laughs> yeah. You won't see it yes, so much. Exactly. That's all. But I think it'd be nice, because the one, they had one trans. Um, Cleo, and I forget Cleo. the guy's name. Yeah. yeah. That was odd. It didn't, didn't. I don't know. The whole thing didn't feel right to me. They're still I mean, dating, though. I was following oh, her on Instagram good. for a while, okay. and uh, they seemed like they're still together. I was okay. like, all right, that worked okay. out. Okay, well, that's good to know. Because I, no. I, you, it's always hard to know how much is producers fucking around with things and how much is for real. But. Yes. We, uh, but we did do a 90 day fiance to get her into the country. But again, yeah. I was happy we were together well, for we, a while. We, by we then. stayed yeah. so secretive about this. You know, we only told people who were very close and, you know, because the, when think, you got here or still when you're in Canada, uh, throughout this the whole, whole thing, right yeah. before I got here. And uh -huh. then, you know, it would, because the heartbreak of me not getting in then would be so devastating mm -hmm. that I think two ropes, I mean, we would kill each other. I don't know what we would do. How yeah. would we recover from that? Yeah. Cause we would never be granted our life. Yes. I did. That's why and I didn't want to adjudicate it on the air and be on the radio every day just complaining about immigration. So like, no one wants to see Lenny Bruce reading court papers on stage. It's, it's <laughs> so boring. <laughs> so let me Jim's talking about his radio show on Sirius XM. It's uh, eight to eleven Monday through Thursday yes. Eastern time. Jim Norton, Sam uh, Roberts, and uh, as I said, JimNorton.com. I'm sure everything is there, right? And yeah, yeah. There's dates and whatnot. I think so. Uh, and, and so this thing goes well. Uh, Couple questions, Nikki. Mm -hmm. Your English is like too good to be true. Thank so you how so how that happen? I've gotten so many uh, compliments in my English. I don't know. I was online a lot as a kid. I think I talked but, to other people online. Was it a was it? And it, her accent doesn't sound Norwegian, right? It's, I know, and she loves hearing that. But it really thank is amazing. Thank you, Doctor Drew. You but know. but, it's, but there's a weird there's an accent, but it sounds. Uh, I can't you place can't it, right? Place you it. can't yes. place it. Even right? Norwegians tell me, like, are, are you really Norwegian? When, when you speak in Norwegian? Well, it, no, you, when I speak English. I'm wondering like, if you have a Norwegian accent. Oh, that they can it, tell that I'm... Hi, yeah. Anoshk. No, okay. they can understand that I'm Norwegian. Okay. Okay. But I forget Nosh. that our English is her second language. So yeah. we're arguing something sometimes, and I forget, like, oh, God, that's right. She didn't understand what I just said because my terminology is an American term. Yes. I forget that she's yeah. it's not her first language. Yes, yes. And did you learn it in school to begin we, with? We learn English very early in school in okay. Norway. I I think for me it was second grade okay. we learned English. It's and were you really did you have to really apply I mean was it a major 
all the way through kind of thing yeah it is like yeah. you conti continuously will learn it but i think it's, not all norwegians are great in english but i think they speak <laughs> english better than the most were you taught other languages other than english just norwegian no a just english, english. And, and you and those are your two languages yes and, and since you've gotten here i'm just curious uh, you had have you had to work on the language you have to pay attention to stuff and um, look things up i don't know i feel like the english language has never been an issue i feel like so uh, other than when jim talks right yeah which, who knows what that is sometimes when we communicate there's certain like miscommunications got it right. got it and, and then how have you found this country any surprises and when i love them well let me just say being transgender in america mm -hmm. i think it's the best country to be transgender right now because right. everyone knows what it is everyone accepts it everyone that i met in america and maybe it's because i'm a gym and through gym i don't know but everyone has been so extremely nice and ex i haven't had one negative experience in oh, person that's good. Yeah, yeah people have been really corolla was okay to you cool yes. yeah it was great so gutfeld was good to her trump was nice Gentleman. to her everybody I, is nice I, to nikki can you believe i would love to see the two of you on gutfeld Aww. that's my that's my me too my i would love list. that i would not so. like to see that spit out all my sexual stuff on fox oh i would <laughs> <laughs> i just want to see some of that Filt instagram back. stuff on gutfeld would be hysterical uh and and you know and just think of think of jim and cat they would love it yeah they would absolutely love it i think so yeah, yeah cats because i see them ribbing you once at a time they, they, they want to get into it you know, oh like, yeah but yeah. We, we mentioned it though it's not a secret they did have either. caitlin jenner on maybe me second with jim Hello. Did they have so, caitlin? yeah yes. they did oh, so we've gotten no caitlin a little bit and um i say it's the closest tra transgender friend we have right I, we probably have others but mm. but um she was always saying to me um don't think about this as anything different than my handedness like I, i'm left-handed and i'm this yeah. and just and that's it what a great beyond way that, to put it yeah beyond that don't don't even like let it be in, we're just and she was she's a substantial person by mm -hmm. the way she uh, is she yeah. took a lot of shit during the whole governor thing but we actually got behind a little bit we had her in here she was in studio here um and just you know just an interesting person she's one of the public trans people that i respect the most because well, she though got shit in this country because she's a, because she's a conservative yeah yeah and so you're not allowed to be trans i don't know if you remember but she did a show when she came out i do and there were a lot of other transgender girls yes. on it yep. and it was funny to watch them all behave like cats like they were all talking to her and trying to lecture her on how to be trans meanwhile caitlin jenner has been doing this for how long and she's doing a show and she's taking you all by the way on her show on her platform and you're yes. making a mockery out of her to be honest i thought that was sad and shitty and ever since then caitlin was just kind of evaporated i guess or not talked about nicely or put on Fox, I don't know, but I feel right. like the trans community do not acknowledge Caitlyn Jenner, and I think that's shitty. She, she was sort of marginalized Because if it wasn't for Caitlyn Jenner in the Vanity Fair article, I legitimately believe the world would not be what it is right now about trans acceptance. I really sincerely mean that. And, and when she was Bruce, did you ever see the documentary? That yes, night? I met her as Bruce. We did uh, the Tonight Show together years ago. Uh, okay, uh, when, you, when you hear his as him yeah. his experience and the profound dysphoria he had i mean he yeah. was suffering for like two decades or something yeah. mm. and then trying to hide it and understand it and do things with it and now he's she's perfectly cool she's yeah. this is her and uh it just was sad to me that to hear that story that he had to and i even them. actually have mentioned on podcast like jim norton was the first person to marry a transgender person in the best but actually although caitlin jenner is transgender I think at least she has a transgender Chris. partner, right? Chris. Yeah. Chris. Chris Jenner. Yeah. No, I mean, now I think she oh, has one called um, Sophia or a blonde girl. Okay, so we and met. I think Sophia. she's trans. We, we yeah. met Sophia. I wasn't sure if she's transgender or not. She doesn't sort of tell you. I believe she reminds me of you a little bit. I, she's, yeah, um, yeah, I think so. Thank you. Yeah. I believe she yeah. is. And yeah. I see the relationship. She was a she was a she was his uh, campaign manager, and she was mm. intense. Really, she really had her shit together. I yeah. fi find it very yeah. interesting. So, so, go ahead. But yeah. no, I just all these allies. They haven't mentioned this relationship once. Yeah, isn't that trans love too? Yeah, yeah. I, I think this idea that if you're if you're have a transgender identity it has to fit into a certain box yeah. which is just as bigoted as any other bigotry yes right? yeah yes yeah, like saying you can't have trans people who are uh who care about things other than just being transgender there's other things that they think about too there's varied as no, any other group of people dealing with jim norton <laughs> yes yeah. absolutely the, the joys sleeping with jim norton <laughs> <laughs> so 
Um, all right. Uh, I know we are competing today with uh, the. Uh, I won't even say it. There's a famous video that just came out as we as we roll out. Yes. <laughs> but uh, you'll be able to see it anytime. Don't worry. Stay with us here. I'm I'm watching you guys on the restream. Uh, uh, somebody's saying I that they met you and you're a great human being. Thank you. And nothing fake about Jim. This is all. This is all commentary here. It looks Aww. good. Dutch are usually great at speaking English. That is true, Greg the baritone says. Yeah, whenever we, um, whenever we uh, went around the country, the Europe, European continent, mm -hmm. we would all. Whenever we made friends, it would always seemed like it was Dutch. They were mm. they were always spoke perfect English, oh, and they're yeah. always very continental and social. They are and very like good that. in English. Yeah, and yeah. so uh, I had not I do not know a lot of Norwegian people. It's a small people. How many people live in Norway? Five million now, I think. Think about that. Mm -hmm. That's less than this town, and they're very literal people. Like Nikki is very literal. Norwegians are very yeah. Like if we try to you know, and we're I, extremely unified people. Very. Like we're very much keep to ourselves. And I feel like when you're in Norway, well, it's for me, you know you're in Norway. That's why I think about I had a Norwegian patient once, uh, and she was from the coast. Mm -hmm. Some of those. And, and, me too. And that was even a different culture, too, yes. than the sort of in, more inland area. I'm more from, like, coast, yeah. woods, yeah. farm, rural. So people in my city, of course, would look at me differently and obviously see that I'm trans. And I think that the Norwegian people are much more conservative than they will admit that they are, considering that it's purely socialism, a socialist country. I do think that they are a bit more conservative as people, well, at least towards this. Socially conservative. Mm -hmm. It was strange for me to see Nikki's home life. You know what I mean? Because I knew her in a different capacity. Isn't it so um, different? Though? Yes. And seeing you on cam at one point and then all of a sudden seeing you uh, you know, like you, you, your stepfather taking care of horses and a farm life. Like, yeah, I'm just, a farm girl. It's just not where I would have expected to, life you to come from. Very, it was very different. How many siblings? No siblings. Only yeah. child. And you're still close to your parents? Or? Yes, both my parents. And your biological father? What happened there? Um, well, I'm close to my biological father. He wasn't in my childhood that much, mm -hmm. so I was only my only mother. Um but they've been wonderful. My life, my dad is in my life a lot now, and yeah. he's he's so accepting. I love my father. There's no more other human that I'm more alike than and, my dad. And when you think about educating people about your experience, what what do you want people to know? It's nice to hear the U.S. is I just, welcoming. Us yeah, I love it in the in the yeah. states, and I just realized that I guess I can only talk what I feel and how I think about it, and you know. That's all I can say, I guess. And I, I feel like a lot of people who are like me won't agree with me. And fine. This is just who I am and that, my that, story. That's kind of the way Caitlin used to talk to me. She just, she just goes, just, this is just, this is, this is, this yeah. let's talk about something else. So many nuances and levels. Like, you know, I have a penis. I'm going to keep my penis. Oh my God. <laughs> Some trans girl will be like, well, you're not a real transgender then. Then you don't have the gender dysphoria 110%. And uh, I get it. But I do also believe that transgenderism is a dysphoria. Call it a mental illness or whatever you want to call it. I do believe that it should be a thing in writing, meaning a diagnosis. I don't think that you can just wake up and be trans. I think you should go and see people and seek help and talk about it and get diagnosed because how are you going to start hormones with no diagnosis? I don't see... These are serious medicines. I mean, yeah, I've, the rest of your life. I've been yeah. on these hormones for 10 years now. Yeah. And I believe, how are you going to be on these medications without having a diagnosis? That yeah. makes no sense to me. Yeah, I, that, That's sort of the way I've talked about to people. When people want it to be sort of diagnosed, what I always say is, wh why is using an antidepressant some if that's what somebody needs mm -hmm. somehow qual qualitatively different than any other intervention if this is the intervention that helps you with that dysphoria that's the intervention you should get yeah right? because mental uh, depression is also considered a mental illness right yep. so everyone who doesn't have that every now and then yeah, yeah. i do every morning i wake up <laughs> we're all a little mentally ill is, i guess is my point speaking of which how is it living with uh, jim norton how is oh that other than what God. i see on instagram well how was your first year anniversary oh i loved it he you loved it a, but not he what gave I got me this you. ring for that, my anniversary that was the that was the pride i got you earrings that you hated nikki is really good but she's <laughs> not good at lying like she's too honest um she started laughing I, like I, really uh, laughing i knew immediately <laughs> she, 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 hates Honestly, my she, goes, she goes you hate him and she goes 
I knew that he spent some money, so I wanted to be like, oh, yeah, they're nice. No. What was wrong with them? They were emeralds. She just didn't like them. And when she starts saying things, she's really bad at making someone else feel better. Like, she just doesn't have that ability to soothe. They were just not it. But she's like, well, they just wouldn't look good with my face. I'm like, I'm 54. I know what that means. You hated them. But it was, uh, you married two years now, but that was shot last January, and that was that was all real. I had gotten wow. a, a photo she took with her iPhone that I thought was beautiful, and we had it blown up, and I'm like, she's going to go crazy. She hated that too. She's I just mean, tough to buy for. I like the photo. I just didn't want my iPhone photo on the wall. I don't know. I wanted art, like Marilyn Monroe, or like it's not art. That's Tina like Turner art. and like glitter. I don't know something different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the classics. <laughs> Tina Turner and glitter. Yes. I thought she would like that. I thought of her, but. Uh, <laughs> but we went. You know what? I'm, I'm better off just handing over money, as most women I know will well, tell you. Well, yeah. yeah, a lot of women. Yeah. Except you can't win that way either. I guess not, right? You know, then it'll be, oh, you didn't put enough thought into it. Or... You had some hits and some misses. Uh, what's your point? <laughs> One year for Mother's Day, it gave me pots and pans. Oh. Because but you know, I, so that's what I she needed and wanted. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I'll go get it. I really want it. those copper ones. So <laughs> well, did you were, like them or did yeah. you think, no, that's not a romantic? I, it it well, was kind of an insult. I was, it's like, so the it's kids like were giving like, somebody a vacuum cleaner. For, no, you know, yeah. Yeah. If the kids were like five years feel. old and we were all at home and you announced you wanted these things and no, I went I out with them I and got them. I don't know. It's more personal when you give gifts for Mother's Day if you have triplets. Mm. And then I saw him on the we Playboy. He, I caught him on the news yeah. on the at the Playboy Mansion for, with with uh, Bill Maher. He was supposed to be doing Bill Maher, and then I saw him on at the Playboy Mansion with a bunch of playmates. And um, I was on the, not with a bunch. It was of on people. the news. It was on the news. Sure. Oh, you know. No, Bill we were Maher's, doing. Here's the deal. You don't like the way the stories get. But fun. nobody told me. Nobody told me. <laughs> I like the version she's Just giving. That's like a great night for you. <laughs> so I it found was, out, and so, I yelled at his management, and I threw the pots and pans at him, and said, "Next time, get me diamond earrings." Yes, Ooh. exactly. <laughs> Jim, take note. We cannot win. No, we can't. But I've kind nope. of come to that conclusion that, like, I would rather just say, get what you want. Yeah, I, uh, I, no, I, I'm with that, too. Yeah. If, as, a, as a man, yeah. uh, it's my thing. I, well, let me just say that when he got me the photo, I mean, I did love the thought. I think that Jim is the sweetest man ever. He's done everything for me. I love living with Jim. He's changed my life completely. I appreciate everything. Maybe, maybe, I that, know that, maybe that blinking and, is and him doing like, Morris code is, that he's being held well, hostage. I feel like that too about <laughs> you. <laughs> I, I need to read, like, to read his do. blinks, everybody. Yeah, I what? know that um, in 20 years, I'm going to look at that and cry. <laughs> yeah, because I'll be dead. <laughs> well, I can't believe Jim hung himself 19 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> yeah uh, but I, I love it too i like being married i didn't think i would i avoided it my whole I, i'm like i was 54 when i got married i never lived with a woman until nikki and i love it like i really you guys like i i knew when we had dinner with you guys last year that you should have found the right people for each other i mean it really was mm. i think so too like yeah. it's a personality thing and mm. i i can't be with people like she's seen the material i talk about our relationship and my act a lot and uh, some of it's about the sex and some of it's just about her as a person and she loves it. And I couldn't be with somebody that would say, don't talk about my penis. Yeah, I, yeah. I just wouldn't, and it wouldn't work for me. I couldn't, a lot no. of people think that this is a gold digger situation. And I get it. I get it. But I feel like Jim is really my soulmate. And that's just it. I mean, we were together for five years before even we're public. Uh. So, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I'm stupid, but I'm not that stupid where I wouldn't see someone who is gold digging. Like, y you know, after years and years, I wouldn't have gotten married if I thought that was the situation. You guys are fun to be around, Thank and, you. which is always a good sign, too. Okay, let's take a little break here. Uh, Jim's got to pee. Yes, me too. Uh, oh, both of you have to pee. Yes. Right, they go, their bathrooms on both directions. Well, luckily, so. we can share the same toilet. <laughs> <laughs> toilet seats. I, might be a bit of a splash. I, I don't know. I don't want to keep things. Can we videotape that? Oh, my, <laughs> sure. Oh, my God. Dude, what is wrong with my wife? <laughs> Love her. <laughs> wow. This is a whole thing you guys bring up. Yeah. Something. All right. Yeah. She was like, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, when we get back, I want to talk about a lot of, uh, could sort of get off you guys for a minute and talk about, uh, it's like things like the Putin interview, actually mm -hmm. just what you think about that. Sure. And some They're, of the thoughts about Moscow's the- Moscow's on the, fire right now. Wow. What do you mean? I don't know. It's on fire. They, like literally on fire? Yeah. They're burning stuff. Oh my God. Oh, you mean they're demonstrating? I, I don't know. I just saw it on Twitter. <clears throat> wow. Uh, I'll look at it during the break. Well, you stay with us. I'll be right back.
We all know the value of a good night's sleep. We feel better, look better, have more energy to spare, but you could be missing out on all of those benefits if you're sleeping on sheets that are too hot or too cold or just plain uncomfortable. I have the solution. Cozy Earth Bedding. Cozy Earth is the softest and most comfortable sheets, blankets, loungewear, and more. They use premium viscose from highly sustainable bamboo, and we sleep in them regularly. I wear their t-shirts. Susan wears their pajamas. Cozy Earth Bedding comes with a 100-night sleep trial, which means you have up to 100 nights to sleep on them, wash them, try them out. If you're not in love, just return them within 100 days for a full refund. Susan and I love them. In fact, we have Cozy Earth sheets on our bed right now, and they made a huge difference in our sleep. If you've never tried Cozy Earth, we have some awesome news. You can save up to 35% off Cozy Earth right now. But hurry, this offer will not last. Go to CozyEarth.com, enter my promo code DREW at checkout for up to 35% off on your first order. That is CozyEarth.com, promo code DREW, C-O-Z-Y-E-A-R-T-H, CozyEarth.com, code D-R-E-W. Are you one of the millions of American women and men dealing with premature hair thinning and hair loss? Or maybe you're scared about inheriting that thinning look because it runs in your family? Start 2024 with a real solution that delivers results without the harsh side effects or unwanted chemicals and no need for prescription. Provia uses a safe natural ingredient, Procapil, to effectively target the three main causes of premature hair thinning and hair loss. By supporting healthy scalp circulation, the delivery of nourishing nutrients, and healthy hair follicle anchoring to your scalp, Provia guarantees more hair on your head than in the shower or on your comb. Right now, new customers save over 50% plus free shipping. Every introductory package includes a full 60-day supply of Provia serum for daily use, plus the Provia Super Concentrate for faster, more noticeable results. Don't wait. Order now to save an extra 10% and get free shipping at ProviaHair.com forward slash Drew. That's P-R-O-V-I-A-H-A-I-R, ProviaHair.com slash D-R-E-W. And thank you all for supporting the people that support us. Uh, both Jim and Nikki are using the latrine. I'll remind you again that the YouTube is at Nikki and I K K I and Jim N Y C. You have to you have to get the at in there. And JimNorton.com, and also on Twitter and Instagram, Jim Norton. You'll uh, you'll enjoy the Instagram the way I do as well. They're making their way back. Oh, there he comes. Yeah. Make them back in the studio. Everything come out all right? Susan, what's that? She can leave her earbuds out. You're not going to take calls, right? I don't think I am. I, I don't see yeah, them. No. Uh, there's one request up there, but I, we, we might do that. But uh, what do you think about Tucker Carlson going and uh, doing an interview with uh, Vladimir Putin? Any thoughts about that? Interesting. It's great. I mean, uh, all these people think you shouldn't talk to him. Like, how dare journalists tell other people who to interview? Like, good for, I don't care. They interviewed Bin Laden in a cave. I, I don't care who they talk to. I'm, I'm interviewing uh, you guys. Exactly. Right? Think about I mean, that. you got the scoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no problem with it. Tucker but, can but, interview anybody he wants. I but no I'm issue. trying to understand what their thinking is. I mean, we have all these examples of major outlets, you know, uh, but uh, Amanpour interviewing like Castro or Barbara Walters interviewing Castro. Yeah. Amanpour interviewed uh, one of the horrible terrorists. I, people want to want to understand what's going on. Uh, do they feel like he doesn't have the adequate chops as a journalist, or just because he's not their kind of journalist, so-called mainstream legacy media journalist? Uh, as journalists are, are now seeing that almost anybody can do what they do, mm. and they don't like it. They don't mm. like that a guy like Tucker can get a giant following of people uh, and, and go and get this interview, and they can't. They don't like that what he says carries more weight than what they say. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm wondering what journalism has even become. I, I don't want to get too crazy about this, but uh, I, I remember when I was show on HLN, I kept, I kept having to tell people, look, I'm not a journalist. I, I'm... A, I'm hosting a talk show and I'm talking to journalists and I'm trying to understand things, but I'm not a journalist and right. I never wanted to be a journalist. Mm -hmm. And uh, and by the way, the things I'm talking about, because I have some expertise in the area, I think I can do a better job than a journalist because literally a journalist is an expert in nothing. 
Literally. Mm. Yeah, they just want, they, and, and also it's, it becomes a money. Didn't the news not used to make money? Like, wasn't that like always considered like a write off for the network? And then once they well, start making like, money. Here it's a show. If I watched a news in Norway, on we watched a PBS channel. That's where we watched a news. So, so it's like BBC or any of those kind of, those, yeah. They're yeah. funded by the government. Uh, yes, which and, they and, do in the UK too, right? BBC, right? Yeah. But they watch that. And yeah. It's and the so, same. but that's not, that has, you know, I, I've told this story before, but I, I have this memory of watching a sort of news news magazine style show in the 70s i was probably in high school and uh this sort of 60 minute style reporter was hammering on this soviet journalist like you know why do you why do you repeat what only what the government is telling you to repeat and why are you the, how can you be a journalist if you're the handmaiden of the of the government and finally this guy was smart dude he looks up at this journalist he goes hey he goes these are different models in your country it's a commercial model in our country, mm. it's a political model. But trust me, you will distort the news as much or more than we do. Right. Yep. Yes. And here we are. Yeah. Here yeah. we are. It just rings in my head, that little interview. I, I wonder if this Tucker Carlson interview is going to make the American people side with Russia more. I'm curious. Well, I think that's what scares everybody, right? That it's going to somehow sway public opinion uh, away from wanting to fund this thing in the Ukraine. Mm. And I... I, uh, I, you know, because I know nothing about these things, I've never ever spoken even publicly about how I feel about it because I really don't know I'm how very, I'm supposed to feel. I'm very anti war. So. I'm anti war generally too, and I'm anti military industrial complex, but I'm Ukrainian by, by background, and mm -hmm. I was part of the diaspora from the earliest 20th century. That's so where my you, family came over. So you feel yeah. this a little personal I, on I, a level. But, I, but I, I only feel it in the sense that horrible things have happened in that region, right. and I don't understand at all i don't understand you know really i mean a russian speaking 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 part of the ukraine got taken over by russia i just mm -hmm. should i care about that i don't i don't know and a lot of the I, russians love putin right so I, I, and is he and, and certainly he's been a bad guy and he's a sort of a mob type kind of yeah. figure i get who he is but he's running uh, you know what what yeah. Who's running our country? Have you seen the latest stuff out about our, our president? I mean, he's just the best man for the what job. I mean, coherent. Is there anything new? <laughs> yes, there is something new. Oh, no. Well, as of what, today? As of today, Caleb, maybe you can throw some of this stuff Did up. Did he fall off the bike again? While you were, while you were with uh, Bobby Lee and his wife, ex-wife. Yeah. That uh, recent. That recent. Uh, okay. And I'll talk to, I want to talk about those guys too in a minute. But uh, they, they came out with a report from the DOJ. They were trying to investigate Biden for the uh, boxes of, of uh, yeah. classified documents left in his garage. Mm -hmm. And the report was, as a, as a clinician, the report was insane. The, the inability to answer questions were at, at because of memory difficulty and confusion wow. yeah. was at the level of forget clinical significance at at the level of oh my god we have a very serious problem is yeah. there some here it is this mm. is a headline a nightmare special counsel's assessment of biden's mental fitness triggers democratic panic a nightmare that is just a couple hours ago and it, they're spinning about it while we are here and uh i i don't it, it's you know i always before uh Probably before, actually, before Clinton, I always thought that whoever was president didn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Well, we're proving maybe it doesn't matter. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, when Clinton came in, I, I knew he was an alcoholic sex addict. I could just yeah. see it. And I just knew it. And I thought, oh, shit, this is going to be trouble. Mm. He's my favorite president of the last oh, 30 years. I applauded he, that when he, I found he's out. A, <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a brilliant, brilliant man, a brilliant administrator. And I, whatever, and, and, sin, and then what that taught me was never to judge the psychological and psychiatric makeup of a president yeah i mean mm -hmm. you can judge it i can assess it but to to say it's not appropriate for the office i can't do that i feel exactly yeah. the same way yeah and for instance let, let me describe one to you i'll just this guy this guy was had kind of ocd and he was so obsessed that he had syphilis. He made a doctor put him on mercury, which he stayed on well into his presidency. Uh, he had periods where he didn't need to sleep for long periods of time. But then he had suicidal depressions that were his friends before he became a, a public figure. He used to have to stand watch over him, keep sharp objects away from him. When he became president, he had such bad, what they called melancholy. He was pulling his son down Pennsylvania Avenue one day. And the, from the White House to the Capitol building, and the red wagon flipped over, 
And he kept going all the way to the Capitol, didn't realize that his son had flipped out of the wagon. Oh, my God. And that was on a muddy, you know, Pennsylvania Avenue back in a long time ago. And uh, should that man have been president is my question. All right, so I'm going to assume it's not JFK because of that. But I would have thought JFK because he used to change his shirt six times a day. He also, do you know that JFK had an amphetamine psychosis? I didn't know that. And he actually mm. did cartwheels, threw his clothes off, did cartwheels down a hotel lot, um, lot, uh, wallway. You know, guys don't know this? I didn't either. Look it up. Look it up. They did a whole drunk history on it. And, uh, people. Yeah. yeah, and he, <laughs> but it was a doctor giving him the amphetamines, oh, uh, oh, as wow. always. His you own know, Dr. The, Nicopolis. Yeah, and the doctor, and it just craziness. I, I get so mad when physicians do stuff like that. Is there a statue in America, like if the president is so visibly like... There is. It. There is. Mm -hmm. They tried to do that with Trump, saying that his psychiatric status was such that he was not appropriate for the office. What they call, uh, 24th Article Amendment? Something. 24th yes. Amendment, I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, who knows whether that will get pulled out here. But go back to my depressed, mercury-laden fellow. I don't mind if he's president. I don't care anything about their personal lives because I think that to be in that position, with very few exceptions, you have to be a pathological liar. You have to be comfortable convincing people that you're going to do something that deep down you know you can't do. Mm -hmm. So I don't give a shit about their mental states as long as they are. As long as it doesn't interfere with their ability to do the job, All right. I could you care go. less if they're nuts. It doesn't and so me. It, when, when, in the, that's actually a great answer. But in the in I've offered that case up to people and they always go, oh no, that guy you wouldn't mm -hmm. want president. That if if we had held to that standard we would have not allowed abraham lincoln to be the president of the united oh, states oh wow was that lincoln huh mm -hmm. i didn't know he got to pray probably, <laughs> probably he was so tall they probably all made fun of how tall and well, lanky he, he was he, he may have had marfan syndrome uh, What's that? Marfan is a, a syndrome of long digits and high height, and oh. they actually have they have a, a lot of aortic disease, like aortic valve disease. Mm -hmm. And all the pictures of him with his leg cross, his leg is in it's a little blurry. People with aortic valve, that kind of aortic valve problems, their leg will kind of click up and down with each beat of the heart. Oh, and so the theory is maybe that's part of the deal, too. And they're prone to depression, too. Plus, so. Mary Todd was uh, nuts, too, wasn't she? Oh, boy, was she so They crazy. probably clicked on that. She, they probably had great sex. She, 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 <laughs> they probably had great sex as top it's, hat, it's why, penis. It's why I believe... <laughs> His big Lincoln Jim, penis. Jim, please use that brain for good. Please keep 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 on the side of good, my friend. But, but his Lincoln log. Oh, his, his Lincoln log. Why okay. she went crazy? She couldn't okay. walk anymore. Well, one of my other stories of her chasing him with knives and things. Crazy, crazy, oh. crazy. Oh yeah, crazy stuff. Uh, and uh, he he called off his engagement to her the first time. And my belief is that the reason is because he had this obsession about having gotten syphilis because he saw a prostitute. Oh. And when he got put on mercury, that's when he went back and said, and the doctor said, you don't have this thing, but I'll, but I'll just put you on mercury just to make you happy. Sure. Keep, keep it Problem is he stayed on the mercury and there's all this, uh, this one historian pulled out all this uh, correspondence between him and this doctor back in Springfield, maintaining his mercury. The big side effect of mercury is depression. So it, it, this obsession with syphilis cost him his mental health pretty much. It might have. His it happiness. might have. Yeah, it might. But yeah, have. he was a great. I guess he was a good president. I mean, I know obviously. I guess he was a good president. You're right. He was hated during his presidency. They killed this, him. He they freed the him. slaves. I don't know what else. Yeah. Like I don't know. I mean, the Civil War. There's a lot of stuff happened. But uh, yeah, I mean, we would we probably would have lost a lot of great people mm. if we allowed the fact that they're a little crazy. That's right. I mean, I who mean, else going to go for a job like that? Except yeah. uh, you got to be a little bit off, right? I you mean, have to be on oof. some level a sociopath to be able to tolerate the level of of criticism you're going to receive. I always enjoy enjoy with Trump how he will just, even if it's negative, he'll just blurt it out. He'll just say it, and I respect that because I'm like that's at least a person that was just. I learned today you spent some time with Mr. Trump. Yes. How? What happened? What was that? I interviewed him for uh, UFC Unfiltered, and we it was a pure sports interview. It was we talked only because he was a very good friend of the UFC back in the day. I remember that. And, was uh, it was it during his presidency or before his presidency? This afterwards? was very recently. This was last recently. summer. Oh wow! Um, and uh, they actually reached out to us and said, "Would you like?" Because uh, Don Junior is a good friend of mine, and, and they said, "Would you like to have uh, Trump Senior on UFC Unfiltered, which I host with Matt Sarah, former welterweight champion?" And we're like, "Yes." So uh, it was all about boxing and his contribution in sports. Trump's memory was so good that people thought, like people can hate him if they want to, but in like his memory was so good, people thought he was reading off cue cards. Wow. Um, and uh, of course, Nikki was with me. Matt brought his wife and uh, he couldn't have been nicer. He was welcoming and he was warm. And it was wonderful. My interaction with him, with my wife was very, very pleasant. And he was very, uh, he was just lovely in person. I was full of nerves, and when I first came there, and as soon as he came in the room, it was just gone because you're just watching this figure just 
speak and talk. He's really good at that. He's really good at making the whole room just interesting. Yeah. And by the way, people who got mad at me for interviewing him. Hey, if Biden wants to talk about or, or Obama or, or Bush, I'm, I'll be as respectful to any of those guys. I would be right. delighted to talk to any of them. So you took some shit for doing the interview, right? Oh, yeah, I didn't care. I knew I would. I could care less. And people have always wanted me to. Tr How come you don't trash Trump when he was on your show? Because Don's a friend of mine. I'm not going to bash them to appease people, by the way, who would lynch me for yeah, and, jokes and, at a, and, in, a, in a second anyway. And people will tell me, like, why are you supporting Trump? Like, he hates people like you. But the reality is he had a Miss Universe contest, uh, not that long, like 10 years ago or something, and a trans woman won that contest. And Trump overrode everyone and says, no, I'll let her win. So you know what? My respect for Trump will always be there somewhat because of that. I have this, I, I'm just, I don't know how to quite frame this question, but we've been talking a little bit about how the politics has invaded the experience of being a transgender individual, right? Mm, yes. Well, Is it just, I, I, I don't know how, how to ask it except this way is it ever just going to be mainstreamed <laughs> we're just going to be like get over I it let's just be don't know i feel like I mean, don't you feel like you're just I that's feel, how you'd I like to deal with it i feel it's like a walking political person almost because everyone's politicizing this now but i'm hoping but i honestly feel like that's going to be hard in my lifetime because there's these different nuances right and there's the they and them's so and they call themselves a trans but transgender means to change the gender you're born and then change it right so now there's a diagnosis in place right yeah which now is correlating with what I'm doing, right? And they're on the megaphone and they're saying this and that, and it just looks bad. You know, trans is not about having the pinkest hair or this and that. It's a real thing. I feel it in my brain. I know that I have some sort of body dys dysphoria. I have to have that. How old were you when you first recognized it? I think I was 11, 12, yeah. which might be reasonably late for these young trans girls in this day and age, but I was feeling it then as puberty was kind of starting to slowly, and as puberty is unfolding, something clicks in the head, and I'm like, clock is ticking, I gotta fucking hurry, I gotta go now and get these hormones. Because if I think of myself with a beard, I would rather kill myself. I would rather die than be a man. See, so, that's interesting, right? Yeah, and believe me, I'm so happy she doesn't want a beard. But this that is, would be very tough. <laughs> but this to is a with. real fear with, and not just to stumble. This is me as a man and living as a man. I would rather die. Did you have any I images? Were you exposed? I, I this is just a one. Something I've always wondered for mm -hmm. some trans individuals going either direction. Um, have we exposed, were there like a window, a moment where you're exposed to some imagery or anything where you no. went, oh, and you had, that's had the, some sort of reaction that's to the it? That's thing. Like, no, there's no moment. No. It just sort of so slowly no, came on. Yeah. Nothing. I yeah. can't remember one thing or one show because there weren't shows 10 years ago in Norway about this. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. And I would look it up online and then the only things that I could find were ladyboys in Thailand because they've always been prominent, yes. right? Yeah. Sure. I love those sites. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's, I Jim's think, been prominent there too. Oh yeah. my God. I think, <laughs> I think the ladyboys were my first memory. It's funny. As far as being made, it's a good question too. Like one of the things we do in this YouTube channel, and I'm not just trying to like whore a plug. It's part of it is like, this is not this magical, crazy <laughs> thing. This is our life together. And yeah. it's very, very relatable. Yeah. Like if people just stopped trying to scold and preach and just, you know, be in a relationship and live the life but you want to live, I, you'd be surprised how similar it is oh, oh. to every other relationship. Of course. Well, except you guys are exceptionally funny. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Both of you. I also feel like I have a little different take than maybe what the trans girls do here because in Norway, mm -hmm. like if you're transgender, you have to go to the national hospital. You have to talk to psychologists. Right. There, no doctor in social medicine is going to give you hormones and if you just go and say you're transgender. Did, did not. they Once you were identified as a certain category, did they encourage you to have surgeries? If you want to, yeah. So they left it all up to you. How, if you how, get the diagnosis and they evaluate you and they think, yeah, she might want a vagina. My, my friend in Norway had mm. SRS mm. by the National Hospital. So yes, they do them. Is she happy she did that? Is that... That work for her? I asked her and she felt indifferent, which I think is weird, but that's how she She's feels. She's having certain issues too. Like there's, there's something she has to have taken care of with when, it. Once you get SRS, you have to dilate for the rest of your life. Right. You have to you have to sit on these dilators essentially. Is it forever? I didn't know forever. it was forever. It can well, be. I mean, it can be. It, it's, it's, a, it's a major, it's a yeah. big operation. It's, it's a, yeah. I'm, serious I, business. For me, I'm very happy I didn't go down that road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I never knew like what the right answer is for people because I don't I don't know what it's like to be that I, I don't understand the thinking, so I never 
I, I don't know what's right or wrong with that because I, I don't experience it. But I do it. believe it's right to be evaluated, especially as a young person, to do have a group of psychologists mm. ask you questions, mm. whether it's your sexuality or whatever it is. I think it's important. Did, did it help you organize what this was? Like, did 110%. You have, so it, they helped you manage it. Oh, yes. They absolutely. didn't discourage you or absolutely. pathologize and, or anything. They just helped and, you understand and, it. And it's weird because the ally trans people in Norway hate this place right they're like hate here no the national hospital oh. in norway because they don't believe or agree that you that this is a mental illness or a diagnosis so they just want to like be able to just do it at ease but please remember that there's heavy drugs involved for the rest of your life and i i really yeah. believe that norway is doing this right yeah so considering that, that's the, shit, the part that that i uh, so from my perspective i always want to make sure this because physicians are the ones doing the prescribing and doing the surgeries yes so as always you have to make sure you're giving the right treatment to the right patient yeah and it's not you don't give medication to a non-patient you don't do surgeries on a non-patient right that they, these are medical interventions and for some people they are absolutely perfect and for some people they may not be so perfect and we have to be able to identify mm -hmm. the difference yeah and the, people don't think about the hormones are, are uh, i worry about liver effects and things do you have to have I your liver tested all the time worry a lot about blood clots and blood because clots the estrogen. Also. so my doctor tells me every time you fly long distance don't take any estrogen or t blockers just don't take your medications and just fly and wear and like, take an like aspirin, compression socks. Take an aspirin Maybe before Maybe aspirin, you go. Yeah. I should, yeah. 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 And you don't wear the like compression socks. No, You've but never I should. Done. Yeah. <laughs> well, you do get up and walk every so often on the plane. No, but I should. No. <laughs> it's like traveling with a cadaver. And I did take my hormones last time just to make sure I didn't land as a man. <laughs> Just yeah, so sure. I don't think it's quite that fast. <laughs> the blood clots, yeah, well, how long were you in the air for? <laughs> so. Yeah, all of a sudden she's got to plug a tobacco in her mouth. I'm like, oh no, it was a long flight. Vodka. <laughs> no, that's funny. So uh, when when you go on uh, when you go on Gutfeld, right? Uh, yeah. How long were you were you first invited over there? I mean, I started. I've been. I've known Greg and I used to live in the same building on Forty Third, and I've been going on since it was Red Eye. Okay, I, so you've been doing two, since two thousand seven. Okay, have you done this? The point I'm going to make was, uh, you know, you've taken a bunch of shit for interviewing trump but i i always i experienced you as sort of a moderate you're yes you, moderate yeah and you would probably be just as happy to go on cnn or msnbc if there was something interesting going on that you wanted to talk about right of course because yeah. i find both i truly do find them all to be disagreeable yeah right they're they're all distorting the truth sure <laughs> they're, and they're all and greg does it one way he does it funny and he's he funny yeah yeah and other uh, people do it you know, seemingly uncannily, they, they, you almost can't imagine. If you've ever had them do a story on you, you'll see how much they sure. distort it, right? Have you ever had much print well, stuff? Well, here's the great part yeah. is, well, nobody will write about our, our life, but uh, AI uh, articles have popped <laughs> up. And very interesting, um, uh, uh, Jim Norton is now known as Miss Nikki Norton. These A articles the think- transgender comedian. They think I transitioned into Nikki. Oh. The, a, the AI <laughs> articles- you should, you should just turn up as Jim. Yes, look what happened. How many surgeries, 100? I mean, I put, I put weight on, so I do have breasts. <laughs> but, hysterical. Yeah. Lipo. She might be funnier, dude, but who knows? I know. Nikki has great timing, which yeah. really bugs me. But uh, yeah, the AI articles say that I transitioned into Nikki. She has great timing, and she has great relationship with the, the lens. Yeah. You, you know, her takes and oh, stuff are really you. funny. Yeah, and I'm looking at myself on camera. By the way, for anyone watching this, I know how I look. I just want you to know that I'm aware. He's I'm aware. sinking into my chair. I'm awful. My profile is horrendous yes. like a frog. And to all you people call me a man, I never got to be a man. I just got to boy, be a boy. Uh, Manhood was a little down was, was it? Was, was your, were your family supportive when this all started coming? They happening? were very supportive. Yeah. My mom put me up with a psychologist in my very small local town. Mm. And he's like telling my mom, this is the process. Now we have to refer her to the national hospital. That's just how it is. So I like that the matter of factness of it all. It's yeah. Just, uh, yeah. It's well, nice. they're very blunt people. Norwegians are very blunt. I've yeah. noticed that. And stoic. Very, she took yeah. me, stoic and she took me yeah. right away to a psychologist. Yeah. And Problem I ha solvers. I haven't really had that many negative. With the government and the way that I've been treated by what, my city or whatever, it's been fabulous. I can't complain at all, right. even if it's been long. So, I had to talk to my parents about it, too, because you know, I was in my <laughs> late 40s uh, when Nikki and I met. And um, I had to have the chat with them. Hey, I really like this person. And then, you know, your mother wants to know what it means. My, you know, are you gay? You know, so, which is a normal question. They weren't judgmental, yeah. but they wanted to know. My grandfather is very old school. He doesn't mm. even have a phone. And he's from the deep woods. 
And he's like a gnome or something. It's like, yes. like something from a fairy tale. Exactly. He's <laughs> in a tree, actually. Rumpel Stiltskin. Yeah, that's a tree. But, but he calls me she more than my mom. So, you know, I think my family is very accepting. And, and you're, what's I have your a question. What's, yeah. Do, in Norway, do they do uh, sexual change at e below the age of 18? Do they... they I don't. I, I hope for sure for the, that there is a law in place. I don't even place. know what you call it. Like, well, I really do hope that there's a law in place uh, that you can't do it before you're 18. But they are talking about it. The leftist in Norway, the trans ally, ally people, usually with the crazy hair colors, are talking about this topic in Norway now and pushing it. And of course, the national, I believe they're saying no, of course not. But to even push for that is, can I correct? It's fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. Who believes that? And if I say this now, then they will hate me. For what? That's crazy. You're talking about your early pre Having SRS under 18 is a non-discussable thing. I, I, have, I, I have to be honest, Lord, I've seen it be good. I've seen it be bad. I've seen it be good. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's how do you select the right person for it? And that's what you're reacting to. It's like, how can you possibly do that before you're an adult? Mm -hmm. Right? right. And, and I agree with you in principle, but right. I have seen it. I've witnessed it where I'm like, oh, this this person's getting benefits. Where it actually works. Where it works. There might yeah. have been times where they've done it in Norway. I yeah. mean, I do know some Norwegian trans people who have gone. I think there's one or two that I know have done the surgeries. Do I know if they were under 18? I don't know. So maybe that was an individual yeah. person to yes. person. Maybe yeah. they started on hormones when they were eight. Like, what right. do I know? Right, right, right. Um, so it's interesting. These are these are very challenging. And they, and they do, should be taken very but seriously. But I do believe that it's... pushing this in general is crazy. Yeah. Because m the average person, by the way, should not be doing that or even thinking about it's crazy you should be thinking about after two three years about with psychology in the picture right i i think that's right i knew a a, a porn star who was uh before obviously before i knew nikki she was uh uh, getting the he, he doesn't look at porn or anything. Just, I oh know. no, 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 we don't. We don't <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, but no, I hung out with her a couple of times, and uh, she was going to have surgery after. Mm -hmm. uh, like you know, what I mean, like the, we hung twice, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm getting. And this is the last after time after dinner." No, not after dinner. Yes, oh. we had a steak, and then she she went into the hot, dropped her off the hospital, and picked her up in the morning. <sighs> no, not after dinner. This again, that's a literal question of my Norwegian wife. Um, no, she was she was going for SRS, and I was like, oh, I wanted to ask her why, like because she described it, and I was like, that's all cosmetic, but it wasn't my place. I didn't know her well, so whatever, I, you know, she did it, and she seems very happy. Good. Okay. So I think I was Listen, wrong. That's all we're all interested in, yeah. right? Is that people be happy and be I've who they're supposed heard to be? Answers in. though, like just to look good in a bikini or uh, jeans and mm. that's not good enough for no me. no no i think i don't think that's right i don't think that's a good reason yeah just wear your bikini you, as you are who cares you said literal is 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 norwegian they're very literal is yes. that part of their <laughs> they don't very, have irony, irony is that something that no like well, this is true too like uh we will talk dirty or something and i'll and, and she'll like answer me real like <laughs> it's like i'm being a pervert like i'm like yeah i'd like to watch you get gang bang and she's like you wouldn't like that <laughs> i know <laughs> I know I Can't wouldn't. Help, I'm not. But. I'm not sure you would, Joe. No, you're, you'd be jealous. I know. <laughs> so. Protected. What do you mean? I know. Having fun, just being dirty. You know? Oh yeah. my God, that's hysterical. Yeah, I think you're very literal. But but I want to get back to uh, to the the CNN Fox or the sure. landscape of the news. I I you know like I said I was years on CNN, years on yeah. CNN, and I used to go from Fox to CNN to MSNBC and do all the the the, the old the news of old meaning. Five years ago, yeah, you know, yeah, four or five years ago, was if you had something interesting to say and they were involved, engaged in a topic that you wanted to talk about, you went on that network and you I did it. I remember seeing you in Norway, actually, on TV. You were there too. CNN, on. probably, because they used to a lot of CNN. Not CNN. It was some other show, Blue Walls, Tables, many tables. I don't know why I'm remembering that. I don't know, but that doesn't. That, that's and then not I really think specific. maybe you lifted something and you said, "This is not good." I don't remember. Is it? Were we in windows like? Like, no like, window. I'm imagining a blue wall. I lifted something. The talk show. Like a light it? blue wall. Or no. I was I hosting something? Was it? Yeah, I remember you were there as a guest. I think. Some but I do weird remember. Dream I, I was in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was there an African American lady on it too? I don't remember that. This is probably 15 years ago. Yeah. I, and you know, I love. Oh, it's probably Love Line back on MTV. Ah, that maybe you're not old it. enough for that. I don't know. How old were you? Yeah, MTV Probably was nine, was international was, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think it was nine ten when I saw. Uh, so seen you on TV. Uh, yeah. yeah, so way back there. Yeah, which makes me feel old. <laughs> I think <laughs> that was Love Line. 
Yeah, yeah. With I Adam think. Carolla. Mm, yeah, yeah, so Adam, who you just saw, he and I hosted that show. Yeah, right. maybe right. I was watching that at nine, and now, oh, Adam, uh, Dr. Drew. There we are. Yeah. And by the way, and I love Gutfeld, because Gutfeld gave me a great compliment. I've been going on his show since 2007, mm -hmm. and he said to me, probably about a year ago, he goes, you know, I've had you on for so many years, and I still don't know your politics. Like, because he never, they've never forced me. Like, I agree with some of it. I don't yeah. agree with some of it. I'm the same way. I'm the same way with them. My job is to be funny, not to toe any particular line. Mm -hmm. Like, I like Sean Hannity. Why? Because he had me on his show and he treated me great. Right. So people no, that's like right. Hannity, they, fine, don't like him, but I yeah. like him because he's good to me. But but this is the point. Uh, most of us that go on these news outlets would go on everybody's sure. outlet. Because at least those of us that are sort of moderate or whatever, yeah. or, you know, it, it's just so odd that you, you know, because we go on Gutfeld, we're not allowed to go on these other things yeah and that's just that is bad that's how it's one of the many ways things are getting siloed mm -hmm. you know where people aren't hearing other ideas or other points of views although i did see geraldo on cnn today i like geraldo because he says things that will really annoy people that like him yeah and i like to like about rfk too they say things that people who like them will disagree with and i respect that yeah I, rfk has been great yeah he, he has he's been very interesting i i thought Gutfeld should get him in on there i think that'd be really interesting i i know i've interviewed him once years yeah. ago it was before he was running it was so fascinating he was talking about the assassination of jfk we're off the air of course yeah yeah uh but just he's such a an interesting person to me i think that's probably who i would vote for because I, I just can't in good conscience i i don't dislike trump i don't hate trump but the bottom line is he'll put another person on the Supreme Court who would love to see us not be able to get married. So oh, I, I can't go for that either. Interesting. Yeah. I, I, I worry about myself in that I have like no reaction to Trump. I don't hate him. Mm. I don't love him. I just, right. I, I just, nothing. It's yeah. <laughs> just right. like, I, I don't understand Trump derangement. It, it's, it's, uh, it really it's, is crazy. Like when they can't think of anything else. positive. But, they, but they can't think of anything else. But well, then the other, the other thing is it, it vilifies everyone that has anything to do with them. So if, if Trump, if Republican, all bad, all evil. Well, many that's years not ago, a way to get things done in this country. I, I'm sorry. Many years ago, I interviewed him on the phone, um, and I was praising Obama because he 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 literally sent in the mission that got Bin Laden. Mm. He sent in people to Pakistan, yep. and Trump's like anybody would have done that. Like he was on the phone. Mm. I think I said, "Can you name anything that Obama did that you like?" Yeah. Um, but I didn't agree with him on that. Like you, you know, you, you don't have to like Obama, but right. he did the right thing there. Yes. So it, it it goes both ways where people just don't give each other credit if they don't. You know, I can't give you one point because that's a point i'm losing do you see a way we can sort of get back some some sort of unity some sort of something yes pretend that the problem stop pretending that politics is the problem it's not it's not democrats and it's not republican it's the fact that we are narcissists and when narcissists want to see things in their own world uh, in their own worldview to be the only worldview that's seen so the problem is us and it's always been us and we are selfish and we are self-centered um, and we don't want to listen to other people. We are the problem. It's not Trump and it's not Biden. It's us. Because if, if it was them, we would have had two separate candidates ready to go. But we and, don't. And so I completely agree with you. And uh, Adam Kroll and I have always said, all roads lead to narcissism. Yeah. And lots of childhood trauma in the last 30 years, and that creates narcissism. I actually wrote a book on narcissism, and I wanted to put a chapter in it about the French Revolution, pre-revolutionary France, because that's the only period of history that I could mm -hmm. figure had the similar problems in psychology and i was predicting at that time that there would be mobs and guillotines right because that's what narcissists do they have unregulated rage and they gather together and focus it somewhere else mm -hmm. now if history is any if that's true if my little theory is correct it took like a napoleon to come in and put a stop to it because you know everybody kept putting everybody else back up in the guillotine you know first yeah. it was the jacobins mm -hmm. and then saint Claude and then the royalists and then it just it just keeps going people just take revenge 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 that's very interesting and and uh and napoleon finally military coup came and said stop i would like to see us stop it on our own without having to do something stupid like right that. right without having to have a short little man uh, right then again that might be turns out turns out he wasn't short well, he really? I've been studying the hell out of this lately. Ah. When at his death, he was exact average for a Frenchman of the time, uh -huh. and it was the it was the Germans and the English that were trying that hated him. <laughs> they were they were trying to create this image of him of this little man, and they were just constantly making a cartoon character out of Napoleon him. complex. Yes, yeah, yeah. But it turns out he wasn't even short. What was he like? Five two. No, he was like I think five, six and a half, or five, okay, something like Jim. that. Five, oh, he's me, exactly. <laughs> so, Tiny man. He was a re <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I do have that complex. It fits perfectly. So, <laughs> ah. so uh, Susan, anything? We're, we've sort of uh, run the the cycle here a bit. Uh, anything on your stamp or, or we had uh, Dill Big Tree here yesterday, and yep. he was telling us that you can vote. Um, 
the We the People Party. Oh, for RFK. And, yeah. In California. In California. Yeah. So if you're in California and you want to vote for him, you have to change your affiliation to We the People. You go to Other and then you write in We the People. So, but he's apparently he's got like 35% right now. Does he really? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be great to see. It's going to hurt one of them. It's probably going to hurt Trump more, I think, mm. uh, just the way Ross Perot kind of wrecked it for George Bush Sr. Yeah, we're all like, oh, well, you know he's not going to win, right? But for some reason, he's really breaking through and, and getting his he's point a, He's got some interesting points of view. He's an interesting He's got guy. a good he's opportunity because Biden's a mess. Yeah, mm-hmm. Biden's a, a total. And Kamala's just not a likable person. I can see myself Democrats voting for Biden. It, it something's going to change. Well, particularly happening. now with this this outrage, this day, this big dust up today. I I, I could it could all settle back down, I suppose. But it feels like no, some, he's, something. He goes going. in and out of consciousness. Well, he just in the last two days mentioned meeting uh, Francois Mitterrand, uh, who in in 2021, who was dead in 2017, or wasn't no longer in France, or no longer the president of France, and also Helmut Kohl. Who also was dead, and and by the way, having dealt with a lot of old people, they start talking about people who are up in heaven right yeah, before they make their yes, way up. Yeah. So I'll just put that on the record. <laughs> well, do you remember? So what's her name? What was her name? She was she was a Republican representative who was uh, killed in a car accident. Uh, Jackie, uh, I forget her name. Jackie something. She died in a car wreck, <laughs> and Biden liked her, but it, like a week later, she's the oh, yeah. and he goes, "Where's yeah, yeah. Jackie?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, but mind you, that was about a year and a half ago. Oh, Dude, yeah, things yeah, are yeah. a lot worse since then. Oh, yeah, his brains are mashed potatoes, and we all know Poor it. Guy. And everyone knows it. We it's, just, it's abusive. I mean, it's, it's so weird that we don't have something in the Constitution. We do. That- changes that we do like, we have article 24 the uh, 24th amendment yeah tell me about it it no is idea. if the patient well i think it was if i'm correct i don't know if this is correct or not but i think it was put in place because woodrow wilson had a massive stroke and was unable to communicate and his wife essentially ran things for about six months oh wow uh and he was they they she would sort of pretend to shuttle in stuff and you're not allowed to be around him. He doesn't feel good and he's in bed and she'd come back out. He he couldn't talk. He was completely gone and she'd make the decisions. Isn't it crazy where we're at right now? Here's we have an 81 year old man. We're accusing of having dementia. We have a 77 year old man. We're accusing of being crazy. Like those are our two choices. I know. I mean, we really, uh, Americans are not as bright as we think we are. We're very coward. Does that freak you out as a non-American? What what do you think we're doing? I just want a normal 55 year old woman to, <laughs> being president. Sure, sure. <laughs> That's what I want. Okay. Just something normal. Yes. I like the younger generation. 25th Amendment, in. Caleb is reminding me, not 24th. What's that? 24th. Oh, okay, 25th. You, you like Thank what? You, Caleb. Susan for president. I No, I, no. <laughs> I am not going yes. into politics. Susan no, I just, I just want somebody young with a fresh brain that me has too. common sense. We do yeah. need young, we need to support and develop and put young people in. Like in, in Finland, they have that very, or they did. That woman? That woman who she was seemed like 30. Great. And I loved her. She seemed great. They made her step down because there was a video of her partying yes, or something. Yes, I saw that. That was New Zealand, wasn't it? No, no, no it, was, it was Finland. Oh, was Finland. okay. So that's... Yeah. I'm hoping for something like that. So give me a little, a little more history lesson. So, so Finland and Sweden and and Norway. So Finland is it, not Scandinavia, it, right? That's and a the, Nordic country. It, it's Nordic, and it's it's more associated with like Iceland is not Scandinavia. Oh, I didn't know that. So Norway, Sweden, and Denmark are Scandinavia. Interesting, and, and so Finland. What what is their ethnicity really? Are they they are they closer to Russian? Yeah, so, yeah. so they have like the weirdest language ever to me. Like, Apparently, I it's can, the hardest one to learn of all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can understand Danish and Swedish, but Icelandic, no. Um, but Finland, definitely. Finnish, definitely not. And and Estonia is a bunch of Finnish people that got isolated next to Lithuania, essentially. Yes. Right? I, I, you, you've been to that part of the world? I have no idea it, what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, mean, I know nothing. All I know is when I hear her and her family speaking Norwegian, they sound like they would have hit each other with an axe. It's not a... <laughs> and I'm like, are you, what's the fuck's the problem? And she's like, oh, my dad and I are just having a joke. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, it's a very harsh... You like yeah. that, like, type, like but it's not flipped. German harsh. I, I no. I think Norwegian is a bit more cute because we kind of sing a song. I would say it has more li- lyrical quality. Yes, too. but but the but the, these are smart people. I mean, I think of the Danes like being I mathematically so. very smart. And yes, the Swedes and Norway very. Yeah, much. when I look at how well she picked up English and just it's insane. Like I have no grasp of foreign languages, but how fast she understands culture and the things we do Thank here. You. And I truly forget that Nikki is not from. So yeah, her adaptability is a lot better than mine would have been at any age in my life. But, I could never have adjusted like that. But that's that's you. you. That's, uh, 
That's Jim Norton. That's me. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, it's not my strength. <laughs> All right. So where do you want people to go? Talk some more. Tell them where to go. Oh, by the way, before we do that, um, how was Bobby Lee and Kalila? Oh, my God. It was amazing. Yeah. They were so nice. I met Bobby Lee once before Montreal. So it was good. It was really, really good. Hilarious. Like, They're it was hilarious. really funny. Like, uh, <laughs> we had a great time. I mean, that was uh, Bobby. And I told him, he's like a freight train of energy like he really is like he just kind of bar and he's just he's always interesting yeah so no matter what yes. he's saying it doesn't yes. matter because you're like what an interesting brain yes, yes. i don't know if it's true mm -hmm. i don't know if it's a lie i, yes. I told bobby yes. i probably believed about 20 percent of what he said in all the years i've known him i don't care <laughs> he's always interesting I um bobby and, and she's great Khalil, uh Khalil is great with she's him Khalil, Khalil, Khalil. 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 is great with him she's funny yes. really smart um th th it's a great show i mean i was very happy and we really i think great. it was really funny the episode we did it was i had a great time she, he um he has one of the most horrific addiction war stories have you ever heard his worst his some of them his yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, his, with his mom and stuff it's like oh mm. dude you're real deal drug addict oh like, yeah real yeah, yeah. deal drug addiction stuff mm. and um he's doing well now he goes in he's been in and out a little bit lately but yeah. that's why that's why he's supposed to call me mm -hmm. and he never calls me bobby he, lee called dr i know Drew. We, he literally he he got on his knees did he not and promised me that he would call me we were on a stage in austin texas in front of a thousand people or something forgot to give you his phone number yeah <laughs> i think he's picked up the cigarette again uh, so maybe he gets he gets maybe every little he gets a little he gets weird and shamey and he's like I, i'm not gonna shame him i'm gonna help him help him I, i'm help sober him. he knows he, I, we've talked before over the years i'm like just if you ever need to i didn't think of it today uh but it's like he, he knows i'm here too he, he, he's had long he had long yeah. periods of really serious sobriety yeah he, he did but when he slips i can always tell he gets he gets kind of goofy emotionally and then he stops connecting with people and you know how it goes I mean, oh my god yeah you yeah. know last thing you want to do I, i'm lucky Luckily, I have not relapsed. Like I, I'm grateful because I know I wouldn't communicate with anybody. Been sober for that, like that's, my whole life. Oh, yeah, but that's what happens. You start pulling back. And, sure, and that's giving you. That's creating the space for the relapse. Because you don't yeah. want to talk to people. If you relapse, I went out and did drugs again or drank. I would want to talk to people in my life now right. and then explain myself. Right. Like I have a, a sponsor <laughs> I talk to in a, in a, a program for a sex addiction and. Um, you know, like I'm not, I, I'm not cheating. I've never cheated on Nikki, which is insane to say that I've never actually strayed. But like, if I go into porn again, it's it's always hard to pick up the phone and call my sponsor because I like I don't want to hear well, it. You should do meetings once a week. But, no, but, I know. But but when you don't pick up the phone, you're. You're saying I'm going to do this. I'm I'm leaving the room to relapse. I can yeah, always tell when Jim has not been in a meeting in a while. Yeah, I'll yeah. always feel it. It's like a wave, but mm -hmm. it comes slow. Mm -hmm. My mood is different. Like mm -hmm. my mood, I'm just not as happy. And you, you can start to tell I'm not connected spiritually. I'm on edge. I'm yeah. weird. I don't even know what I want. For I just no want reason. dopamine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all dopamine. But it's but your but your disease is got a plan. Yeah. And that plan involves you're already in relapse at that point. Oh yeah, you, yeah. yeah. Where they say the drink is the end of the slip, or yeah. the whatever. I yeah, guess, or yeah. the or the tug. <laughs> yeah, and and Bobby yeah. is exactly <laughs> like that too. I because I can I when I talk to him, I'm like, oh dude, here we go. Come on now. Yeah. He's like, what? Well, fuck you. I don't know. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Was I talking to your sponsor six months ago? Okay, yeah. Okay, well. Well, all right, you know, whatever. It's very hard to uh, make yourself because it feels good to act out. Acting out's fun. Like I love acting out. I mean, it's really the fact that I don't do it with other people is is again, it's a miracle with my history. It's it's crazy that I do. I don't want to cheat on Nikki because I love you, Nikki. You, but but it was there's a more nourishing alternative, the one you're on, and you will lose your disease will take away so much. It will take away stuff from you. And I'll never be able to say I didn't do it. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, even if she didn't catch me, I would know I did it. Mm -hmm. And now one thing I feel good about is that I haven't done it. And I'm not going to well, do it. Well, not only that, if you kept the secret, you wouldn't be able to be sober. You wouldn't be able to maintain the abstinence because then now it's just to be on. Because, yeah. You know, the and shame I would just keep and the going. guilt and the shame and whatever. Yes. And the and fact it would not? be fun. And so. I would want to do more of it. <laughs> uh, Oh, interesting. Apparently, the President of the United States is about to speak live from the White House. Uh, Caleb, on what topic? On his own uh, medical <laughs> that's, condition, that's, I that's wonder? That's what they're saying. Yes. Yeah, they're saying he's about to speak after the special counsel report, but the timing of it is interesting wow. because that just came out with the whole Putin interview just came out recently, so... Your babies. Craziness. I hear your... And your babies are... Yeah, and my babies. Somebody yeah. said really nice on Rumble. Trey Miss and Toon said, peace to you all. 
if and whenever possible, in a world full of confusion, impressive how you bring so much love and points of truth into it Aww. with a little angel face. Aww. And then there was a little love fest after that. Thank you. Well, very nice. And uh, yeah, go go watch Biden. He's gonna he's, he's gonna talk into a tin cup. Facing, yeah, now that we're all loving plant. each other, we can all <laughs> yeah. So see if the world can re re reconstitute a little bit. But uh, <laughs> we got to meet you guys in New York. Go back to that fish yes. restaurant. Yes, and, uh, oceans. And, uh, great, oceans. Great, great restaurant. Yeah. yeah. And that was uh, nice. yeah, we'll do that again when we. Yeah, uh, we love it. you. Thank you. Yeah. We love you both. We appreciate this. And we'll uh, show you a little bit of Pasadena. Yeah, yeah. we'll go out there. It's no New York, but, but it's got its. Where parts. do you want people to go? Tell them where to go. At Nikki and Jim NYC is the YouTube. If you want to see our life, and we're starting a podcast there, and then uh, you're doing a tour at JimNorton.com. JimNorton.com. If you want to see my act and hear a lot about her penis, and uh, <laughs> it uh, Miss Nikki Norton, MS Nikki Norton, and Jim Norton on Instagram. Yeah. And then don't forget a serious radio program, Jim Norton and uh, Sam Roberts, right? Uh, it's Sam had a baby today. Congratulations. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. Third child for Sam and Jess, so is congratulations. Sam Ra Roberts the same one we knew before? No. No, there's a singer, Sam right? Named Sam Roberts. Oh, no, this I'm is different. This okay. is a... There's a male. A yeah, guy who a male. only eats chicken fingers yeah. and likes okay. wrestling. <laughs> All right, uh, let's uh, throw up really quickly the upcoming schedule. I know we've got a special show on Monday. I want to promote that quickly. Uh, we've got, uh, yes, James O'Keefe from uh, The Truth Project. Oh, yeah, yeah. Veritas, right? Veritas, yeah. yes. Mm. Uh, Jimmy Dore, Alex Berenson coming in. Zuby, Rob Henderson, Tessie Lore, Tess Lore, Willie Soon. Uh, great guest. Thank you, uh, Emily Barsh, for all that. Uh, so, And if you have requests, contact at dotrue.com. We'll, we'll consider people you might want to talk to or be, have me talk to. And uh, so, again, Monday, and it's Monday at noon, is that correct? Yes. Monday is noon time. So uh, be there for James O'Keefe. Should be very interesting. We'll see you then. Thank you. Thank you. Ta ta. Bye. Ask Dr. Drew is produced by Caleb Nation and Susan Pinsky. As a reminder, the discussions here are not a substitute for medical care, diagnosis, or treatment. This show is intended for educational and informational purposes only. I am a licensed physician, but I am not a replacement for your personal doctor and I am not practicing medicine here. Always remember that our understanding of medicine and science is constantly evolving. Though my opinion is based on the information that is available to me today, some of the contents of this show could be outdated in the future. Be sure to check with trusted resources in case any of the information has been updated since this was published. If you or someone you know is in immediate danger, don't call me, call 911. If you're feeling hopeless or suicidal, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800-273-8255. You can find more of my recommended organizations and helpful resources at drdrew.com help. 